The Oswegatchie Hills, a coastal forest on the Nyanic River in East Lyme, Connecticut, are full of life. Join us in this virtual revisit of a June 2019 hike of Oswegatchie Hills Nature Preserve with naturalist Al Birchstead and members of the Mountain Laurel Chapter of Wild Ones, a nonprofit organization that promotes native plants. A retired college biology professor, Al grew up exploring these woods. He loves to point out the nature and wildlife in this town preserve. And as a Save Oswegatchie Hills Coalition member, he shares our goal of protecting the adjoining 236 acres of coastal forest and adding it to this preserve. The Oswegatchie Hills are full of mosses, lichens, and fungi. Depending on the time of year and moisture, mushrooms can quickly pop up and disappear. Lichens grow slowly, so the pale green growth we see on rocks can be years old. Rock tripe, which turns to crisp pieces that curl up on the rocks in dry weather, has a history as a hardship or famine food. General Washington's troops at Valley Forge reportedly boiled and ate it. Something else you'll see throughout the preserve is native mountain laurel, or Calmia, Connecticut state flower. Calmia starts blooming in early June and can last into July some years. Bees and butterflies are drawn to the showy white and pink flowers. The stamens have little spring-like mechanisms that release pollen when bees bump into them. Mountain laurel leaves are evergreen, so we see them throughout the forest understory year-round. The curvy trunks and striated bark are good identifiers of calmia once the blooms are gone. There are lots of other native plants and insects that depend on each other in this ecosystem. The white-flowered plantain pussy toes feed the American lady butterfly caterpillars and bees pollinate these native orchids that we call pink lady slippers. Bumblebees are the primary pollinators of the striped wintergreen. Extracts of this plant have shown antifungal and antioxidant activity. No wonder indigenous peoples used it to treat arthritis pain, kidney stones, and urinary tract infections. Pipsisawa is another common name for it. Downy rattlesnake plantain may or may not treat snake bite, but the beautiful leaves of this jewel orchid do remind some people of snake skin scales. These will bloom in late summer. Look for a single stem with multiple teeny pearly white flowers rising out of each whorl. Native eastern huckleberries and blueberries abound in the Oswegatchie Hills. The tasty fruits support many species of birds and wildlife. Here, Al shows how to tell them apart. Blueberries have many tiny seeds in the fruit, while each huckleberry fruit will have 10 hard seeds inside. There's sticky resin on the underside of huckleberry leaves, but not on blueberry leaves. Later this summer, birds also will feed on the red berries of the Canada Mayflower. This is one of the first plants to leaf out in the spring. And then these white flower clusters show up in May. Oaks are the dominant hardwood tree in this coastal forest. You can see where the chestnut oak gets its name, the shape of its leaves. Although an introduced blight destroyed American chestnut forests long ago, individual trees still pop up, including this one in the Oswegatchie Hills. Researchers hope these individual trees might hold the genetic potential to reestablish the majestic American chestnut in our northeastern forests. New England forests are home to multiple fern species, including the New England fern, which is the larger fern Al is holding up. It grows in wetlands. And the New York fern, the smaller one, with double compound leaflets, it can grow in both wetlands and non-aquatic settings, so you might see New York fern growing in a naturalized landscape or yard. A nature hike wouldn't be complete without arachnids and insects, and the Oswegatchie Hills have their share of fascinating ones. This mother wolf spider carries her babies on her back until their first molt. 
when they outgrow and shed their first exoskeleton. Then they all will scatter. Many beetles in the forest are beneficial insects. They eat other insects or help the forest decompose. And don't forget to thank the millipedes, which aren't insects, they're diplopods. These invertebrates are probably the biggest consumers of the damp and decaying wood, leaves, and plant materials on the forest floor. They're crucial in the ecosystem's recycling of nutrients into new plants. There's also this blue-green stained fungi at work in rotted birch wood. Historically, woodworkers have sought out these blue-stained pieces of wood for inlays and accents. And this orange polypore could be the edible chicken of the woods. Its bright orange color usually shows up in autumn. We hope you've enjoyed this virtual nature hike of the Oswegatchie Hills Nature Preserve. Please go to our coalition page on the Save the Sound website and help us continue to fight to save the remaining 236 acres of undeveloped Oswegatchie Hills in East Lyme, Connecticut, and add them to this nature preserve. Thanks for joining us.